Today I'm going to share an idea that saved my team thousands of hours. This works well for service based businesses that need a lot of location pages, directory websites that target a load of locations or similar services, and it even works for affiliate websites when used intelligently. In fact, any set of pages or archive pages that need a lot of unique content will benefit from this if your team are currently using a tool to manually create spun content and then putting it into the pages. So let's take a look at this code and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So if we have a look at the top here, I've got dollar post underscore ID equals get the ID. And what that means is look at this current post that we're on in WordPress and get what the ID of this post is. If you're doing this on an archive, it's the term ID or something like that. You can find all this information out. Uh, this ain't really gonna be a coding lesson. It's more of just a um, perspective lesson, something that I'm sharing a way of looking at it. So we're gonna get the ID here. Now we wanna get the ID because we wanna use everything off the back of this because we don't want this code to change. And this is why things like the PHP function rand don't work because it's gonna give you a random result each time. Whereas we want it to always be consistent so that every time Google goes to this page, it's giving them the exact same content so it don't look like it's randomly generated. So we get the ID right here, and then this very simple bit of code here just says if that post ID, so this right here that we just got, is divisible by two and it gives us a whole number. So basically this is checking is it an even number or an odd number because if you divide three by two, you're gonna get 1.5. So that would be false in that instance, yeah? So if, it was t if the number was two, then it would give us a whole number of one, and then we would get variation one. Whereas if it was an odd number, then it's gonna give us variation two, like that. So straight away, off of the page ID alone, we've now got two variations of what can be output here. So now if we wanna take this a step further, we can use this right here. So I've got a variable called first char, and what we're gonna do with that is we're gonna to say to get the title of this post, so if this post was called Dan's post, the first character of it would be the D, and so we're gonna just get that first character right here, and then we can put a conditional inside this one here, and we can say if that first char is equal to A, then do something. And then what we'll do after that is then we can take this exact same code, go underneath this and say, close that one, else if that first character is B. And then I'm just gonna close this so that we can see what's going on here. And then what we've actually now got is variation one, variation two, and then if we was to take this exact same code and put this into here, we would then have three and four, which means that we, at first we had two variations, but if we now was to do this and go through every single letter of the alphabet, we've got 26 letters and we've got this logic giving it the odd or even, which means we've got 52 variations here straight away. Now, some of these variations aren't gonna be as common as others because there aren't many posts that are gonna start with the letter Z, for example. But this is a really good example of what you can do with this so that you can really create a bunch of unique content. You could also do other logic in here, for example, like you could take this and say, if the first character begins with A, B, or C, and then you could do it in groups of three letters. Another way I like to use this is when we have archive pages, we can count the number of posts that are in that archive and then display content based on the number of posts in it. So for example, we've got this loop right here and at the end of the post, we've got post counter plus plus. That means add one to this variable of post counter. So if there are seven posts in this archive, this will be equal to seven. If there's five, it will be equal to five. So then at the bottom here, I've got an example of an if statement we could use, which is to say if that post counter, so if the number of posts on this page is greater than 10, then output this content. And for this, I've just used variation one. Then I'm gonna say else if that post counter is greater than seven, then output variation two. And then else if that post counter is greater than five, output variation three. And because we're starting with 10, it's gonna run this first, so it's gonna get, if it's greater than 10, it'll always be this one. Then if it's less than 10, but greater than seven, it'll be this one. All the way down to when I get to three here, and then I've just said else output this variation. But you could do more or less, you could run this up as big as you want. If you've got a load of posts in your archive, you could do this up to 100, 200, 300, whatever you've got the time to do. 
Another way you can use this is you can get that post ID and then get the second number from the post ID and do that same is it divisible by two with a whole number logic that we looked at earlier. So right here we've got get the post ID uh, with this post underscore ID. Then we've created a second variable called second underscore num and we're going to say to just get that second number off of this post ID into this. And so basically let's imagine that the post ID was 178 this is going to be equal to that 7. So then where we've got our if statement here, we're going to say if that second number there is divisible by 2 and given us a whole number, then output variation 1. Well, 7 isn't. It's going to give us 3.5. So that's going to output variation 2. So now we've got another layer of uniqueness to this based on that second number of the ID. Now with all of this code that we've just gone through here, I haven't tested any of it at all. So as I said at the beginning of this video, this isn't a coding lesson. The purpose of this video is for you to get an idea, go away, create something amazing and hopefully make lots and lots of money. So if you try to implement something I've shared here and the code doesn't work, then go over to ChatGPT and put it in there and explain to ChatGPT what it is you're trying to achieve and 99% of the time that will get you there. If you like this sort of video and you want to learn more about this sort of stuff, make sure to leave a like on the channel and subscribe to it for more.